Alexis Nolan with Mining Journal Select and I'm delighted to be joined this morning at Mining Journal Select London uh, by JT Starzecki, the Chief Marketing Officer of 5E Advanced Materials. JT, lovely to have you here with us. Thank you for having me. Um, now, 5E is an absolutely fantastic company because not only have you got a fantastic resource, in boron that uh, is in live production, of course, um, but you are a uh, sort of a fascinating example of going um, downstream as well. So that sort of vertical integration strategy, very much, which is which is not commonplace in this industry. So it would be really interesting to just get a bit of a, a viewpoint from you as yeah how things are going uh, after production has started, because it's not just boron, there's a lithium uh, angle there as well. So maybe a, maybe an update on the hard mining side, but sure. But also an up, it's an opportunity to update on the sort of vertical piece as well. Absolutely. So we are in the process of completing commissioning. So we actually have not turned on the facility quite yet, but we are at right. the very, very tail end of it. Um, commissioning continues to go very, very well. Um, we've got a, we've built a, a fantastic team out in Southern California, led by some ex Albemarle executives. Um, we happen to be located in a very mining friendly, mining rich community, so access to talent has been has absolutely played in our favor. Um, as you mentioned, we're primarily mining boric acid, but we do have a lithium carbonate coal product stream that comes out of our operation. That will essentially make us the, the first new boric acid producer in the United States in quite a few decades. Um, and will also put us in as one of the newer lithium producers too in the United States. So we're excited about that. Um, where ultimately we're going to be going with the business is not just stopping at mining the product. So we will mine the product and we will deliver to customers, but we will also keep part of our internal capacity to, to develop what we call boron advanced materials hence the 5e advanced materials um, and and that can be anything from a zinc borate to an aqueous boron to uh, uh, you, know, you name it a, a boron carbide a, a boron oxide um, and the reason we really we're, we're planning on going down that route is is that's ultimately what's going to unlock shareholder value right so it's one thing to be a miner it's another thing to be a miner of a specialty product but it's a, a third sort of stratosphere to be a miner a producer and then a specialty product um, developer um, so we're excited about that absolutely and in terms of that sort of investor story uh, you, what, what does that how does that translate to the to the source of investors that you get and how you, uh, what sort of investor education are you having to do because if you're if you're if you've originally uh, before you were even called 5e yep. of course um, uh, you were very much in the mining space so right. there was a there was a narrative that that probably fitted uh, an existing investor community so so what what's the what's the balancing act as you move forward in terms of keeping and educating that mining community presumably but also developing uh, yeah, stretching that that mindset and uh, attracting new investor audiences as well yeah so we we do have to start with the very basics yeah um, oftentimes I end up kicking off presentations as I did here today saying if I went around the room how many people would know what boron is but you know as, as I look around the room that we're sitting in there's 15 or 16 uses of boron today um, and then when you start you start extrapolating to the investment community that it's such a broad reach it can be anything from green tech technology to electric vehicles to food security so it's used in fertilizer blends um, the the audience will start to understand just how wide of a range that the product goes into or yeah essentially goes into it then also becomes a bit of a scary proposition given the fact that this the supply of boron is really tightly controlled by two main entities and you've got a handful of, of smaller kind of mid-tier players in South America and some in you know in Eastern Europe but outside of that you have very few projects coming online you know you've got six that are sort of on the radar globally and of those six there's only one that's as far advanced as we are you know so all the way through the, the study stage through the drilling stage through the permitting stage now through almost complete with the construction phase um, and while we are complete with construction we're just finishing up commissioning and and you know by by sort of the end of the half of this year we will uh, so the first half of this year we'll be producing boric acid and outside out with that comes lithium carbonate so yeah yeah, yeah. And so, as the, obviously, the focus on commissioning and, and getting into production. Um, but how how does that shift going forward? You know, is is the in, in terms of that uh, 
uh, investor story again is, is is the primary focus still very much on on extraction um and and how, how does that pan forward over the next one two three five years in terms of then going downstream um in terms of, of bore on product development I, sure I guess. so we're very fortunate in the way that i think we've started to build out the overall infrastructure so we've got a phase one facility which will give us about two thousand tons of boric acid it'll give us a few hundred tons of lithium carbonate um, that'll prove out the tech grade it'll also illustrate to the market that the infrastructure and the project solution that we've put into the ground is very efficient and effective yeah. Um, and then as we have that product starting to flow out to customers for various technical trials and things like that, we can start to move into the value engineering of adding the second phase, which will add significantly more capacity. So we've taken an approach where we want to, to build the, the, um, the infrastructure in smaller chunks mm -hmm. to do it faster because of the, the growing supply and demand imbalance. The faster we can get commercial scale production into the market, the better. Yeah. So that is a customer driven and a finance driven uh, concept. So you know, listening to all the different stakeholders you know, we constantly hear, how can you fast track development? How can you get into development faster? So then as we go into the value engineering and we start to construct the second or the, the second phase, we have this facility that we can essentially retool and start to produce these advanced materials. Fantastic. So, yeah. yeah. It's an exciting journey. And it's, very much and so. And it's a great yeah, story. Yeah, and very uh, much so. Obviously, wish you the best of success. So, thank you so JC, much. JC, thank you so much for joining us today. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Yeah.